Hello, I'm not going to say this is going to be a quick video like everyone else does because it's, it's really annoying when people say that and it's not. So it's not going to be a quick video. Uh, apologies for the rain. I've come out here and it's now starting to rain, which is great. Um, this video is going to be a kind of a review on a video I did a, a number of years ago entitled Why Are New Caravans Rubbish? Back then I kind of thought that Swift and Bailey and all the other manufacturers were getting a little bit beaten up by customers. Um, not quite understanding the processes of how to build a caravan and they were saying why can't you do this and why can't you do that and the, and the argument back then was well, look you can't have a caravan that, that's uh, 60,000 uh, pounds and it can't weigh three and a half tons that's what it would need to be to have all the fixtures and fittings that the customers wanted so that it didn't fail there's this kind of push me pull you thing with the manufacturers where they have to have it in a certain weight and a certain price range now ironically £60,000 is kind of over the horizon at the moment because some of the vans are up around the early 50s uh, but that's not to do with the fixtures and fittings that were fitted it's to do with obviously everything that's going on uh, Brexit, cost of living, electricity and everything like that that's why all the caravans have gone up not because the caravans are any better so that was that was my argument back then <clears throat> and I kind of thought that I want to speak from the manufacturer's point of view to kind of get their point across as to you know look these are the problems that they've got if you go to the factory and have a look at how these caravans are made it's amazing I mean it's just it's just mind-boggling how they can get anything even close to this together and it's all kind of hand-built so there is that factor in as well that it, because it is hand built it's built it's not robots so there are going to be issues because obviously there's issues with everything that's hand built so fast forward a number of years and um, the theory back then was that the, ma the manufacturers were having you know some of the products were new the construction was new so there's gonna gonna be this wash through of, of a few things of issues uh, that they would eventually sort out now the reason for this video is because several years down the line and I can't really stand behind the, what I said before and I'm getting frustrated with what I think the manufacturers are doing now so <clears throat> when let's let's talk let's take for Swift for instance. So this is you know, across the industry. So we got Swift, we got Bailey, we got Eldis, Coachman. I, I struggle to kind of comment with because we don't see many Coachmans and I don't have much to do with them. They look pretty good, but you may be able to say that I've got a problem with this. That's that's been ongoing. Um, I have had a year old one which I do look after and the front locker gas locker is is, is rotten in, within a year. So there are problems there. Um, but the ones I do know about, Swift uh, and Bailey and Eldis, I'll talk about them um, a little bit um, uh, independently in a minute. But it seems to be that there's, there's issues that are kind of built into the caravan that aren't being addressed on a yearly basis. The, my, my thoughts of how like an R&D process would go would be that um, you'd have a new product and then you'd have an issue in a year that you didn't know about because you'd, that's what R&D is. It's not tested um, in, a, in a factory for years and years to see um, if it's okay before it goes out to the customer. They pretty much build it, it goes out to the customer and it seems to be that's where the most of the R&D is done kind of in the market because they can't afford to have it sat for 10 years. So that's how it works. So, which is fair enough, it's a cottage industry, they can't afford to do that. Um, so year one, year two, year three, when the new construction's coming out, so it goes from, from uh, uh, softwood to hardwood in 2016, and then 17 goes to full GRP, uh, which is great. And, and it was kind of, it was pitched as the, the era, a new era of um, dry caravans because the construction was much better. And with balanced panels, and this is in, with Swift, uh, and, to, and in Bailey to some degree, with balanced panels and the GRP and polyurethane being impervious to water, you think, great, well, it can't leak. Um, but then we started to get trouble. Um, we had cant rails, which are the rails that go along the side of the, um, the caravan that kind of go over the, the roof and the, um, the side walls, it sits on like that. They were leaking because the sealant has failed. Um, but okay, all right, you know, there's, there's a problem there, right? So year one, year two, you might see those problems, but they don't come out for a year or two because obviously, oh, actually some of them were leaking on the fork quite actually, so that's not quite true. But um, yeah, a year or two down the line, you start to see those problems. Okay, so you adjust the process so that it doesn't happen again, that problem then goes away, fair enough. We're still seeing it. 
Um, so we're still seeing camp rails leak. I've had one, very, uh, it's, it's, it was on a 2017, so it's, you know, it is one of the older ones, but we have seen it on new caravans as well, where the sealant has failed and it's let water in. Um, on one of my other videos with the Swift Smart system, um, I go into a little bit more detail of the problems uh, of why that is. Um, but in this video, I'm just gonna talk about the issues I have with why it's not being addressed. Um, so it's kind of the, the massive elephant in the room is you know that these caravans are leaking and we're having issues. I know they are and the manufacturers know they are. No one's really talking about it and say, right, okay, look, what are you doing about it? Um, and to be fair, I don't build caravans. Um, they might be doing something about it. The 2025s might be, might be different. I'm a bit out of the loop because I don't sell new caravans anymore uh, for economical reasons, not for anything else. And you know, it is easier. Um, so there might be systems in place now where all these things are, are addressed. I don't know. I don't make caravans, like I said. I'm not in the loop, so I could be completely out of order with this um, train. Um, but as we speak at the moment, I, I'm, I'm being optimistic with that. I don't think that is going to happen, um, but it could be. So like I said, let's see what happens in 2025. So um, the main issues I have is that when we repair these things with Swift and with Bailey to a certain degree, but like I said, I'm, I, I'm not a Bailey dealer, but we do fix them. I'll talk about them in a minute. With Swift, when we replace these things, um, we can spend a little bit more time doing it because it's not on a production line and there's no, not those kind of pressures. So I think we do it a little bit better here because we have the time to do it. Um, we put more sealant in and we make sure it cures and, and you know, it's in a better environment because we can actually you know, spend a bit more time on it. So, but we're doing it like for like. So we just get a new cant rail and we use the same process to put the same stuff on the same caravan. So if it's failed once, my theory is that it's probably gonna fail again. Same with the sunroofs. Um, we get a new sunroof, we put it in. The process has changed over the years slightly. They've said, right, put different um, amount of sealant in and you do this and we've got prep M and, and every, every time a new sheet comes out, we have to do something slightly different and we seal up over the top, then we don't seal up over the top. It, but it seems to be uh, a sticking plaster to try and find the reason, the, the thing that stops it from leaking. Now the problem is we're putting more sealant on to stop the leaks coming in, is that's when we then see the stress cracks because it's too rigid and the stress is going through the, um, the sunroof, it's not actually going through the sealant or, or allowing any movement and that's when we see the cracks. Um, so it moves the problem on. Now, the problem with having GRP and polyurethane, which again is, is very good, is that if we do get any water ingress coming through whatever the cant rail or the sunroof um, or anything else, it then, I'll talk about window rubber in a minute, it then damages the front shelf, which is harder to replace than the wallboard of the old system where we had to strip the wallboard out and replace that and the wood around the windows. Trying to replace that uh, front shelf is a devil because it's been put in when there were no sides and front on and then the sides and the front are put on and there's fixtures and fittings we can't get to because the sides on and they're just they're hidden so it's not designed to come out so trying to remove one of these um, front shelves and the top shelves as well is really difficult job to do um, so it kind of moves the problem on from yes the walls aren't rotting but it's damaging the furniture which actually is a bigger job so that's my issue is that we're repairing these things like for like and so it's going to happen again it's it's going to because it's happened once why is it not going to happen again now i suppose from swift's point of view it's out of warranty you know the second time it's not their problem they don't have to front that up um, but then that's even worse because the customer then has to pay for it i just priced one up 1500 pounds to do it's the first one we had to price up because it was out of warranty um, so it's around about the 1500 pound mark um, and that was just the sunroof. I don't think we actually did the front, the top shelf on that. It hadn't damaged the front, the top shelf. So that would have been probably half of that again. So if you're having sunroof, front shelf, um, top shelf, then you know, you're looking at nearly a couple of grand, I would have thought. So that's the elephant in the room is what are they doing um, in the future? My thought would be, especially in the sunroof issue, would be not to put it in. Have they spoke to the customers and said, will... Um, taking a sunroof out um, uh, make you not buy the caravan. 
Now there might be some people that do say, yes, it, it you know, I want to buy the Bailey because I really like the sunroof because you know the Bailey's got one or someone else has. Um, but then there must be an algorithm that says, well, you take the amount of people that say no, and then you have a look at the amount of hassle and the amount of money they're spending on warranty. And you go, well, if you lose 10 customers, it doesn't really matter because you're saving a million pounds. So I, I don't know. I can only assume that that must be looked at and there's a reason why they haven't thought about that. I would take the sunroof out. It would make the vans, vans cheaper. It would make the process quicker. It would save um, problems with the sunroof. I know they're nice, but it's not worth it if they can't have a system um, where it will work or find another system. There's, there's got to be something out there. Um, so that's a sunroof issue. And, and But the overall issue that I've got with is that's why I'm doing this video is that we're just kind of repairing it and, and doing like for like so it's going to happen further down the line. And that's what, like I said, that's when the customer has an issue because they have to pay for it. Window rubbers, again, the construction with the balance panels, polyurethane GRP, pervious to water, absolutely great. Those front window rubbers, uh, and again, there's another video uh, talking about that a little bit more. Um, if they leak, they then get the bottom shelf wet and that's even harder to replace. That is a, a really hard to do because it's, it, it's built in and you have to cut it to get it out and trying to get a whole one in its place is very difficult to do. So again, under warranty, all right, it, you know, swift to paying for it. Um, but when it's not, then either it doesn't get done and you've got unsightly uns un stain there or it's gonna cost you quite a bit to do. So what do we do with window rubbers? Well, we get them from Swift. They send us a window rubber, we put them on and we stop the problem. But again, and we've had this where we've had the Swift, um, the actual stuff that Swift have sent. And A, we, we weren't sure that it was the right size, but we fitted it anyway. Um, and then, because that's what they sent us, so obviously you think that's, that's what they want us to fit. Uh, uh, two years or even sometimes a year further on, it's doing it again. Now, it's okay if you catch it quick, if you're sat there and you see a little drip and we can replace the window rubber before it damages anything. But the last one we did actually this week was a customer had it on their drive. Unfortunately, uh, her husband wasn't very well, so they didn't use it for three or four months. They were going in and out um, on the drive and having a look at it. But if you're not looking for something, you're not gonna see it. Now in the meantime, when it came in for service, the, the front of that sunroof, uh, sorry, the, the corner there was all wet. And, and actually that is the, um, the van that I use on the video about the sunroof so you can see what it was like. They didn't even notice it, didn't even know anything about it. We've just had to replace all the window rubber and the front shelf. So then the customers come in and said, okay, is that solved the problem then? And I can't say that it has. All I can say is, well, we've replaced the window rubber and we've replaced the shelf and I can't guarantee it's not gonna happen again because all we're doing is replacing like for like. Um, so they have to keep a closer eye on it. Now that's not a nice thing to say to a customer that's got a two-year-old caravan that's got an endemic problem that you're gonna to have to keep an eye on. That's not what it's about. So again, the elephant in the room that the manufacturers know there's an issue because they see, they must be seeing the um, uh, the amount of warranty claims that they're getting through because that's, you know, they're, again, they're not daft people. So rather than just, right, okay, what are we gonna do in 2025? Well, let's put some window rubber on again. Um, and, and, and have the same problem in two or three years time. Now they might be going to the manufacturers of the window rubber and say, look, we've got an issue here. They might be able to go to the window rubber manufacturers and say, look, you know, and claim it off. So Swift might not, be, might not actually be paying for it, but that still isn't solving the PR problem and the issue with the customer that you have. Um, so they might be um, trying new window rubber, they might be trying new sealant. Um, I don't know what they're, they're doing, um, but if they are just putting the same thing in, then again, two or three years down the line, we're gonna see the same problem happening and you know, it, so it goes on. Um, so when I buy these caravans, I have to look at different things now. As we're getting along, I know I've gotta check that front shelf to make sure there's no bubbling and this bottom shelf, check the window rubber. Again, the video kind of shows you how to do that. Um, and then just have a look at the cant rails to make sure there's no, um, uh, no gaps there or anything like that. And there's, there's, there's different things we have to look at. And, but it affects the furniture. And when some of the furniture is just, you, you can't get it out. Um, so if you've got a leak on the camp rail down the side and it affects you know, one of these cupboards, you, you know, what are you gonna do? So that's swift. Um, but again, it's the same problem over and over again. It seems to be that the manufacturers are just doing the same thing. 
um, and they're not changing the processes uh, and they're not looking at how to engineer the problem out. Now, again, I've said this before in one of my other videos that the problem that I can see is that if you use sealant as the first line of defense, it's going to fail. Um, history is telling us that. The cant rails use sealant. And like I said on the other video, the, the, the roof comes over like that, the side comes on like, like that, and then you've got sealant down there, sometimes not at all. That's what we're finding. And then the cant rail goes over the top and you've got sealant on the top of that cant rail. So you've got sealant there and you've got sealant there. And that's the only thing that's stopping the water running down the walls. If you did that um, and you had the water running out and down the side, then the sealant could be the second line of defence. But again, I don't build caravans. There could be a very good reason why you can't do that and you have to do that because it has a knock-on effect somewhere else. I don't know. Like I said, the only thing I can think of is that um, if I had a conversation with someone like that, they would say, no, you can't do that because of this. You go, okay, fair enough. Okay, so you're still getting the problem. We still have to think about how to stop it. So sealant, I don't think, can be the first line of defense. Um, and so moving on to Bailey, again, they're using sealant as the first line of defense. The, the clamping system has sealant between where it clamps down and, and, the, and the side of the caravan. Bailey, pretty much everyone I'm going to see, if it hasn't got a wet floor, I'm quite surprised. Um, you've seen on the forums um, and, and everything with, with the, the issues we're getting with Bailey. Why they don't use a composite floor? I, I did hear that they tried a composite floor and it didn't work. Um, so again, I don't do that kind of thing. I don't make caravans. There must be a good reason why they don't use a composite floor because everything else is composite. So if you've got a composite floor and you manage the way the water goes, so you can kind of move the way um, the, wa the water away from, from where it's going to be sitting, then I would have thought that would be a good way of doing it because there'd be nothing to rot. Um, I had a year old caravan, a year old bailey on the ramp the other day and there seems to be four pieces of plastic in each corner. So if you've got a bailey, go and have a look. There's a kind of a hard piece of kind of plastic um, and it seems to hold the water against the floor. So with the baileys that we've been stripping apart, the actual construction is not stopping the water getting to the floor, it's actually promoting it. It seems to be guiding the water to the floor and then so that it, it soaks it up and obviously because it's wood, wood moves water as, as its job, that's what it does, and it just moves it into, into the uh, centre of the floor and it rots it out. Um, so if I see a bailey that hasn't got water ingress in the floor, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the moment. And it isn't, it isn't um, if, it isn't when, it's if. Uh, no, sorry, it isn't if, it's when it's going to happen. Um, it seems to be that if you haven't had it, you will have it, uh, or if you haven't had it, it's lucky, you're lucky. Now, just a bit of a caveat there is that, okay, there's thousands of Baileys out there and we may be seeing only the ones that have the issue and there might be thousands out there that are, are completely fine. Um, but the, as, the, as they get older, we see that the number of those vans that are coming through with the Alitech system the water ingress issues go up. I've had two or three in the, in the last week where, I mean, they're just completely, um, but yeah, completely gone, full stripped out. Um, now the issue I've had with the Alitech system is that when they did the retreat, if you've got a, problem, a, a systematic problem with a, a, a system, if you expand it, that problem grows. So with the um, retreats, I don't think there was a single one. And again, I could be wrong, I could be out of order there but everyone I saw had a problem and some of the Bailey D's that I've seen have said they fixed it one year, then the next year it's exactly the same, the floor's completely soaking wet. So if you make, a, if you make the van bigger, that problem gets bigger and it becomes worse. Every, pretty much every Bailey retreat had a wet floor from front to back. So you know that is an indication that the system itself that they're using is flawed, it doesn't work. Um, and again, they're using sealant as a first line of defense, they're not engineering the problem out. We're 15 years down the line with Alitech, still getting problems. Um, so the R&D isn't working. I'd have said you'd have three or four years to, to weed out any problems and then after that you should be just kind of maintenance and, and changing a few things to get it even better. But when we're 15 years down the line and we're still getting problems, uh, I saw a 2018 the other day I went to appraise and the whole thing was completely gone in the front. And, and it's, a, it's a relatively new van, 18, 19,000 pounds worth of van. Now the problem you get if you get difficult to see, you had big mushrooms growing there, it, it, that was easy to see. Um, but some of them are on the open market and the customer doesn't know that they're 
they got water ingress in and they got an issue um, and also you know you're not going to know because you're not an expert in looking at it but if you look at some of my other videos that shows you how to look at it um, now I don't know if I'm being cynical um, but the new lino that Bailey have been using looks remarkably similar to how the stains look when they come through um, from underneath and damage the lino um, so that it looks like it hides any issues that are coming through I think that I mean I know that sounds horrible and I, and I think that's probably just coincidence I can't believe that they've used a material on the floor that looks very similar to how it looks when you get water ingress and you can't see the problem um, but I yeah I I'm being cynical there. I don't like. I don't like that thought, and I've, I'm fairly sure that isn't true. But it's just a coincidence that you have to look a lot harder with that new kind of snaky kind of effect, uh, bluey colour um, lino than you do with the the standard lino because that sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, so again, another elephant in the room. Bailey know there's an issue. Why not bring it out in the open? Talk about it say what they're doing about it there's no point just building caravans year on year having the same endemic problems uh, because you're going to lose customer confidence um, and it's just not right you know we should be in a position where we can um, move forward we all make mistakes Every, you know everything's new uh, it's not again it's not easy to make a caravan if you go to the factory it's, a, it's an amazing process and they do a fantastic job with it it's 80 percent of the way there you just need to go that 20 percent extra um, and, and that's the issue I'm having at the moment with these things. So then we move on to Eldis. Um, they've been losing money fairly frequently in the last few years. Um, how, I think the reason they're only still going, again, this is my opinion. I could be out of order, I don't know. Um, I think the reason they're still going is they were bought out by Heimer, who were then bought out by Thor. So there's always a bigger fish. You think Heimer's big and then Thor come along and it's you know a massive multi-million pound, billion pound company. So losing a couple of million pounds a year for them might not be an issue. I was quite excited when Heimer bought out um, uh, Eldis. Again, you would have thought, first thing you do, right, look at the Eldis problems, see what they're doing, let's change that. You've got Heimer there with fantastic build quality, bit heavy, bit expensive, but they know how to build a caravan. You'd have thought their guys would have gone in there, looked at the product and gone, right, let's change this, let's do that. The combination of German build quality and English style, that's the one thing that Eldis do do very well. They look fantastic. The layouts are great. All the, um, the ingredients are there are fantastic caravans. So if you bring Heimer in and then fix the build quality, they're going to sweep the market. There's not going to be anyone that's not going to think, right, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. It looks stunning. Layouts are great. Right, I'm going to buy one of those. Um, customer confidence goes through the roof and off they go. Um, again, that's my to, to Penneth on that I don't know if that's the case that's what I thought was going to happen doesn't seem to be the case if they're still there in a few years um, I'd be very surprised I think they're going to have to do something significant to get the customer levels back up even the dealers I was thinking about buying an Eldis uh, sorry uh, having an Eldis franchise here because I went around the show and it looked amazing the buzz around the show was great everyone's going oh look at this and then I spoke to the dealers and they were pretty much said oh, just don't touch it um, because of the issues we're having, Eldis are terrible. They keep changing their, their um, uh, ethos so that you buy the caravan, the customers had it there, could put a warranty on it, uh, sorry, a, a deposit on it, and then uh, six months down the line, the caravan hasn't turned up and they're charging the customer more money. Sorry. You can't do that. Um, if you take a deposit on a caravan at that price, that's the price it's going to have to be. Uh, it's your fault if you haven't been able to produce that caravan in a timely manner to get it to the customer. All those kind of things just might boggle my mind. How can you run a business like that? So you had the poor, poor dealers having to say, oh, sorry, the caravan's gone up £500. It's still not coming for another six months. Um, I mean, you can imagine that. I mean, it'd just be horrendous. Um, so then the customers are giving the caravan back. Um, from the dealer's point of view, then they then sold it for more money. So, you know, they kind of did okay about, out of that, but that's just a you know, bit of a bonus. You still lost a customer, haven't you? So, so Eldis, um, not good build quality. If they're here in a few years, I'd be surprised unless they do something significant. Um, my main issue with the Eldis is when it goes to eight foot wide. 
we've seen the sunroofs, uh, the Hecky roof lights crack right in the middle. Uh, and then again, if the customer doesn't see it in a timely manner, then the, the roof panel is, you know, is, um, has been damaged by water ingress. Now, the reason for that is they have a structure in the roof uh, and then all they've done is made it wider. Now, if you know anything about structure and building, if you make something wider, there's going to be more stress. You have to uprate the materials that you're using to allow for that stress. It's the same with buildings. If you, if you go over a certain span, you have to go from a four by two piece of wood to a six by two piece of wood because the stresses are more and it won't take it. Eldis just seemed to make the vans wider, didn't do anything with the roof. You've got the things sagging in the middle, cracks the sunroof, and then that's it. To me, that is simple. It, it's just physics, it's just how it is. Um, so then you think, well, hang on a minute, we've messed up there. Let's make the roof a lot stronger. When we've repaired them, we've had to put extra noggins in to stop it from doing it again, because we're trying to fit something and the roof's physically sagging. Um, so again, are they just doing that again? Are they producing the Buccaneers and the, you know, and, and the big eight foot wide caravans um, uh, in the same way? So we know it's going to happen again. Um, are they, if, if they are doing something about it, um, again, they might be saying something about it. I'm not quite in the loop with that. I haven't heard anything. If I was eldest and we had a problem and then we fixed it, the first thing I'd be doing is shouting about it, saying, look, we did have this problem. Sorry about that. We sorted it out. What we've done about it is X, Y, and Z. That's what they need to do. And that's what all the manufacturers need to do. They need to front the problems and they need to say, right, we've had this problem. Let's sort it out. This is what we're doing about it. Um, that's what they need to do and 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 it would produce customer the first deal the first um manufacturer that does that will catapult themselves forward to being a trustworthy manufacturer and it will and, and customers will flock to them because they, they're being transparent they're not just doing the same thing they're doing year on year and just not worrying about it and that seems to be what they're doing but like i said i hate saying that and i can't i can't believe it um uh, to be true because it just doesn't sit well with me, especially knowing the people involved as well. I just don't think that's the case. They don't want to make a caravan that leaks. They want to make a caravan that um, is sound, that the customers love, that they don't get any warranty issues in. I mean, imagine the bottom line, if you, you're saving yourself two million pounds on, on an issue that you don't have to pay for uh, over and over and over again. I mean, I'm pulling that figure out of the air. It might not be anything near that. And that might be the other thing is that actually the cost of fixing these things um, is fairly small um, and therefore they're not the, the cost of uh, sorting them out at the, the front end so they don't happen might be high I, I don't know again I'm guessing so I've probably waffled on enough and you've got the gist of it um, I would like the manufacturers to be up front on their websites to talk about the problems um, to really kind of get to the bottom of what the problems are we all know their problems we know it the manufacturers know it the customers know it the forums, you go on the forums and all we see is why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? And the other video I did was, well, look, you can't say that because, you know, I, I've changed my mind with that a little bit. And I'm now thinking, look, hang on a minute. We've had it. It's been several years where we're seeing the same problem over and over again. You're fixing it by putting the same problem in. It's going to happen again. It needs to change. Something needs to happen. We either need to remove the problem or engineer it out. Um, and that's really... Um, kind of the way forward I think with it um, you might think different um, you might think I'm talking another baloney um, obviously put in the comments below um, if you do think that it'd be interesting to see what you think um, and also share this please um, I don't think anyone else has said this on on YouTube or the internet or anything like that um, we need to get talking about it we need to get people engaged in in the problems you as a customer don't really have much of a say to the manufacturers other than with your pounds and your pence uh, and now the way the market is at the moment being really tight this is when the manufacturers need your support um, so if they can do something and they can front it up and get the small number of people that are interested in buying caravans at the moment to them whichever manufacturer does that first i think is going to survive um, and and you know maybe make a profit or benefit from it uh, rather than you know have thousands of caravans sat in a field that they can't sell so there's 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 more than just a pr exercise here it, it is about profit it is about um 
uh, uh, building business up, and it and it is a and that's that's what we're all here to do. You're here to have a nice caravan that doesn't leak and doesn't give you problems, um, and the manufacturers are there to make some money and uh, and make a nice product. Uh, talking to coachman actually, um, I did have another problem which I forgot about, which I I done another little video on, and the control panel at the top. Um, but again, with Coachman, I, I don't really know what the problems are. There might not be any. I do think they still use the, the tape on the, on, the, on the wall boards, which is frustrating, it curls up. Um, but again, I could be wrong there. Um, so let me know what you think about the Coachman. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you, again, if you can share it, uh, share this video on your social medias so that we can get people talking about it, like it. Um, subscribe to the channel there's going to be more content like this and it'll be interesting to see if anything does happen with this so thank you very much sorry about the ramblings half an hour I know um, but I think it's important I think we need to talk about this um, and we need to get it out in the open and we need the manufacturers to front the problem and get it sorted